Oh, hello! How are you, everyone out there? All my little roaches, welcome back to another episode of The Josh Potter Show. It is I, Josh Potter, and I'm getting ready to, this weekend, be on the road with one Annie Letterman. Surprise! It's just as of uh, Saturday, I think it's when she said something about it. So, I'll be in La Jolla at the Comedy Store this weekend, Friday and Saturday, Beyond that, I'm going to be in uh, oh, the Ontario Improv. September 30th, I'll be in Yuma, Arizona. And uh, the, f- the 14th, the 14th is it? The 6th? I don't know. I'm really fried, folks, in terms of my memory capacity at the moment. And that's okay. We don't need to have memory for today's show. We have plenty of memories indeed because my guest today is Matt Wayne, my best buddy in the whole world. That's their cheering out there. You can't hear them, but they are. I can't hear anything. <laughs> I can't hear anything. No, they're cheering in the in the in the internet right now. In the internet. Yeah. Oh, cool. Welcome to my show, buddy. Thanks, man. It's great to be here. Yeah, I talk about you all the time, so I feel like everyone already knows you, technically. Uh, but we've had quite the week. First, the week started with Rob. Uh, going to my apartment on what was it Labor Day, my new apartment, and receiving all of my furniture. Because I got the, if, by the way, if you were in Connecticut, thank you for coming to uh, Tom Segura shows. As if I, <laughs> I was like, thank you for coming as if it had anything to do with me. <laughs> uh, but I appreciate all the kind messages I got from those. But I was gone because of that. I did. I had to come back on Labor Day. So I was going to miss my furniture delivery. So Rob went and it was smoother than I could have ever imagined it. Rob, was it smooth for you? Yeah, it was easy peasy. All right, good. Because I didn't want it to be something that was cumbersome for you to have to do. But uh, yeah, I got my furniture I was in the security line when he called me and I'm like, oh God, this is going to, I'm going to be on the phone in the security line. I'm going to be this dildo (laughs) that's on the phone, like yelling at movers or whatever on the security line. And then I'm not going to call them, be able to call them back. And then I landed on Tuesday and Matt was, uh, landed a little bit behind me there and boom, I put you right to work. You did. It was great. I made you help me move in, essentially. I'm like, hey, welcome. So this is my place. Do you want to rest? Well, we're going to need to do a couple things first. <laughs> yeah, you'd already tell me to make a list for Target. We were making a Target <laughs> run. Yeah. Just what everybody wants to do when they, you know, oh, man, I'm in sunny L.A. I flew across let's hit the, the Target. Flew across America, and now let's hit a Target, please. But, yeah, that's what we did. And, uh, I mean, we made up for it. We, we assembled some things, my television. It was all worthwhile because it was very satisfying yeah well since then i mean we've we've done nothing so i think that's a fair (laughs) trade-off yeah that's that's true we've done a lot of drinking and a lot of weed smoking and some other things and some uh well the the edibles those edibles i don't know about those edibles yeah tell me about your edibles experience because i don't um i mean we have a dispensary right on the corner rob of my apartment well this place claims that they're Edibles are 60, six zero milligrams. A piece. A piece. So you and I were doing the thing where you're like, oh, we'll split it in quarters. We'll start testing it. <laughs> nothing was happening. Right. So then it's like, well, we're not, we have nothing on the docket. Just fucking eat a whole one. Yeah. I mean, we might as well. We have days to erase. Days to erase. So we start yeah. popping whole ones. Now I'm like, mm, maybe. Pop two whole ones. Now you're at 120, which if someone came up to me at a bar and was like, here's 120 milligrams, eat the whole thing, I would be like, Get out of my face. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, like I don't want to lose my goddamn mind tonight and have a fucking panic attack. Yeah. But I was, could not stop eating these 60 milligram things. It kind of made me feel invincible, but like while also just being a little high. Well, I'm wondering, because we were just constantly drinking too, is that dilute the high? I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I think, I don't know, because some people say when they... I don't know you and I are you know we just always do, That's the thing, do both. Yeah. I'm always smoking, edibling, and drinking. People are like if I do both, the room spins. And I'm like, well, it's it's a whole thing for me. It's like doing. I don't have the. Here's the thing. I never. I haven't had the room spin thing since like I was six. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't. Uh, yeah, rooms do not spin for me. Yeah, I, I don't drink liquor anymore. So maybe that has something to do with it. I bet if I was off my ass on liquor and I tried to smoke weed I'd be like a little fucked up off that maybe but I don't think weed's touching me anymore <laughs> I don't think I think weed and I are on us on a relationship level that is uh of like a married couple like I mean 
it doesn't get me off. It doesn't uh, make me mad. You know, it's, <laughs> it's just there. It's just we exist. Like, but you fi- keep coming back. Yeah, no, we've been there. We're in a fifty-year relationship. Her yeah. and I. You know what I mean? We're like an old married couple. I separate we go, beds. We, You're doing separate she makes bedrooms. Me eggs every morning. Yeah, I'm sleeping in separate beds. <laughs> yeah. You report to each other in the morning. Yeah. How exactly. was your night? But man, I mean, to recap the drinking, it kind of started. We're like, we're moving, so we drank. I bought like that is a common thing with moving. People think, oh, if there's beers, pizza involved, doing all this work will be nothing. Yeah, which is true if it's your buddy. Plus, it was like I'm you're staying also here. A the professional, next... you were a professional mover. That's true. My moving instincts went right into it. I started breaking down cardboard and you know all kinds of shit. Yeah, we're gonna have to fucking tell that story too because we just. Dist- do, we uh, what's the word like? Uh, I, I'm f- so fucking fried, dude. <laughs> I know, what's like, the word? This is a like, fun. Like, what's the word? I don't know. What is the word? I don't, <laughs> how do I know what word is? Not in your... destroyed. Uh, d- uh, got rid of. I feel like fucking uh, <laughs> Mr. Miyagi right now. <laughs> Daniel San right now, where he's like, "What's the word? Yeah, destroyed. Destroyed. Uh... Yeah, we got rid of. Uh, it starts with a D, and I'm fucking so dumb right now. I'm and I'm like, it starts with a D. I'm on the spectrum enough to like destroyed. dwell on this. Uh, got to get rid of. Throw away. That doesn't start with a D. Dispose of. Dispose of. Oh, I we got disposed. it. It was, there, it was there for so long, and yeah. I had to fucking really find it, folks. I apologize. Thank you for bearing with me through that difficult time. But, yes, no, we had to dispose of all this cardboard, and I call my landlord. He's like, just break it down and put it in the box in the cans. I'm yeah, like, I'm not going to, what am I, a fucking... This was also an obscene amount of cardboard. Yeah, what do I have to fucking <laughs> dedicate the rest of my quarter to fucking breaking down cardboard? Like, I'm going to just spend the rest of my life doing this? Fuck that. Also, it would have filled up one container. Oh, yeah, it would have filled up two. more than one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I we took the TV box that I had, and we put the fucking cardboard in there as much as we could, and then we found a dumpster, like, down the street for a construction site, yeah, and these we, construction sites where they just have open dumpsters and they're putting all their their old concretes in there and everything. I'm and sure they just hate dust it. We, flying. Yes, we were like, we'll just come back here under the cover of night. Yeah, and get rid of this car. It'll it'll be in there like getting rid of a body. We'll throw it in there and then they'll fill it up with concrete and shit. How many of the construction guys are looking up into the dumpster? That's what I. That's my logic. First, we did a recon mission where we went by just yeah. to see what we were dealing with. I did a little climb in onto the dumpster. What's in there? Took a what peek kind of in there. I said, there? there's, there's room. Yeah. And then it was fun to like walk down the street like carrying this massive TV box. And then just one hurling on it up into space. And yeah, just hurling it into the thing and then not running away because you don't want to look suspicious. So you, we just <laughs> did like a thing and then... You do that, like, hands in the pocket, like... Yeah, I lit a cigarette. <laughs> like, we're just going for a nighttime stroll. And then every day after that, because I was stoned usually, walking by there, I'm like, they know it's me. Yeah, yeah. every time we've walked <laughs> by there since then, we've gone to, like, get a coffee or something, and we're like, oh, God, they're talking about us. We don't... Do you speak... Do you, <laughs> they're going to plan a big prank on us. I don't know Spanish, but I think they're talking about us. <laughs> but then I noticed one of the days that there were, like, multiple mattresses sticking out and i was like well maybe other people are doing this maybe other people are coming by with their mattresses that's the one that's what one must hope and also they gotta hope you gotta hope like their shit's gonna just smush mine you know into nothingness so it's like it's not really uh cumbersome for them to get rid of it or like have to dispose of everything in there but well also you can't put an open dumpster in the middle of a street and expect people not to use it. Yeah, I'm throwing sh- little shit in yeah. there. If I'm walking by with one of these, yeah, guess yeah, what, pal? Whoosh. Sky hook yeah, right in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, that shit, right up in there. There is a Kobe mural on my street, I, and I have done a Kobe into that dumpster with uh, Kobe, and then you know, layup. Well, you know. I would love to see you do a layup. <laughs> I would love to see your layup form. It's pretty good, actually. I would admit, I do the finger roll. That's nice. The finger roll from below, from below my body. But yeah, we've been drinking a lot, and uh, it ramped up. I mean, that you came here early, if you think about it, because we were the whole point of this. Trip well, it's was, always early here. I've well, noticed. sure, no, but you came here early, meaning like in the calendar, because we, the whole point of you coming was to go to the Bills game. Yes. On Thursday night. And you came Tuesday. So we started Tuesday. Then Wednesday, we just kind of kept it rolling. Wednesday was a, yeah, open swim. 
Yeah, that that one. Do whatever you please. That one, we didn't really do anything. I don't think we went to lunch or something, we but lunch. we were drinking mostly and at my apartment, which was is brand new to me at this point. Honestly, it's like I've spent my first night there with you, basically. Uh, in an air mattress uh, yeah, in the living room. Tomorrow, or tonight, rather, will be your first night all alone. It's kind of scary. Yeah. Does anyone want to come keep me company? You're going to have no one left to yell at. <laughs> 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 yeah, evidently I'm a tyrant to live with. Well, I, I wouldn't... I don't know about tyrant, but there were times I felt like a nuisance. I was like, this man... Would love for me to leave. No, that's not true at all. I don't want you to leave. I'm <laughs> scared for when you do leave. But uh, I don't know. Evidently, I don't talk clearly or things like I'm learning things about myself. Like if I were to have a girlfriend, these are things that they would bicker at me about. Like, Listen, I get the whole not wanting to repeat yourself thing. It's right. tough. When someone's like, what? What? And you say it twice. It's like something so simple like that will just make your blood boil. And so I know what that's like because it happens to me all the time. My wife, we're in an apartment. You can't hear people, but yeah, you really do not have much patience for it. Uh, <laughs> you're like, what's wrong with you? You can't hear. <laughs> I'm like, well, I can hear you now because you're annoyed. You're fired up. You're speaking clearly. <laughs> but when you're on the couch, like ripping a bong, and then you sit up, you're like, <laughs> I'm like, what was that? Excuse me. You're like, I thought I was gonna have a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, okay, well, go have a cigarette then. I'm an asshole for asking what you said. No, I and I do, like, feel this in society at times. Like, if I'm at a place that's kind of loud, I have people go like, huh? And I repeat myself probably for a stranger multiple times before I get annoyed. But then I go, I can't talk to this person anymore. And it's my fault, evidently, but I feel like I'm yelling. When I feel like I'm yelling, I feel like well, I'm when you annoying. When you yell... It's crystal clear. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, I I would assume that's the case. Yeah. But I don't I hate the idea of somebody being like, Why is this guy yelling at me? You know, I don't want to start with a yell. <laughs> yeah. No. You want to work your way up. No, I talk <laughs> softly. And it's been a pro like I just saw my parents right before you came here, obviously, and the same thing. They're going deaf. They are old. But I have like a thing where I say something and they're like, huh? And I'm like, and then I'll say it again and they're like, What? And then I'll be like yeah, like then I get fucking mad and I say it. I, and do I the same snap thing. at them yeah. and it's weird. Talking about it in therapy, no big deal. But on Wednesday, <laughs> <laughs> on Wednesday we drank our faces off, and then Thursday, of course, was the game. That's where I feel like I was the most drunk at the game. Well, yeah, we were drinking those uh, tequila sodas in a can. Yeah, the mamitas. Mamitas. No free shout outs, but there you go. Uh, Sorry about it. No, I don't care. I don't. I drank them on this program, but yeah, they uh, they fuck they turned the gears a little bit, I'll say. And then you know, Wednesday night was probably the most drunk. Thursday or Thursday night was the most drunk. Friday we went to the comedy store, and it was like a tropical storm here, so it was a calm, gloomy day. Very wet, very wet. But the comedy store was fun, and uh, you know, not so much drinking there. Although there was, we drank. Yeah, a bunch. There was no lull. Every time he was like, "You want another one?" You want another one? You want another one? It was great. I always had a fresh Miller Lite in my. There's another free shout out. <laughs> no, they could have it. They need it. They could have it. No, but that's the way that it just goes. I'm starting, and I asked you. I'm like, does the, do you, you you've been going with we? You know, we're together, so it's like a cattle. Uh, what's it? That fucking thing, the uh, alternator. You know? Sure. It keeps catalytic going. converter. I wasn't. I don't know if that's what I'm talking about. To be quite honest with you, but uh, an alternator meaning like, if I want another one, you're gonna say yes. Yeah. And if you want another one, I'm going to say yes. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. So For us. Right. But when I'm alone, you know, it's like I'll have like a Friday night like we had and that'll be the end of it. You know, or like a Saturday. Th nothing was like Saturday, though. That's what I was leading up to. Yeah. I mean, we did, we spent as much time in a bar as most people spend at a work shift. <laughs> yeah. You know? We got there at 4.30. Yeah. We left at 1. Yeah. In the morning. Yeah. <laughs> and had several shift changes. You know, we had like a, you start a tab and then the girl comes over. She's like, guys, I hate to do this, but my shift's over and I want your tip. So I'll give it to me now. And then you sign away. You go, that's cool. And they go, this person's coming. And then this person, and then f we had four hours would go by. Yeah. <laughs> and then she would go, guys. Guys, I'm heading out. And we're like, another one? What, day, what, what do you guys have? Like three hour shift? She's like, no, I've worked here all day, but it was pretty wild. Yeah. And then- <laughs> 
so we had three separate servers at that bar. And then Sunday, we just watched football all day. Todd came over. It was a great day. Drank some more. Today's the first day I've not had an alcoholic beverage. Yeah, so far, so good. Is this a problem? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it's a problem because, like we were saying, but I don't think we ever got crazy. And right. I haven't been hungover. I haven't been hungover, hungover any of the days. Maybe that's where the 60 milligram edibles come in handy. Maybe they fight the hangover. Ooh, I like that Something's theory. happening. I like that theory. I think they all just canceled every, every, each other out and we were just fucked at the end of the day. But I've never, not one of these days, if I woke up where I'm like, you know, like, you know, where you feel like there's a desert in your mouth, you got a dinger, total headache, you're going to barf. I had none. <laughs> yeah, that's I true. had none of that. I would just wake up and be like, oh, Potter's still in bed. All right. Well, <laughs> guess I'll pop on the old NFL network. And you're jet lagged, so like you wake up earlier than you normally yeah, would yeah. too. Well, you're waking up at like noon your time. 9 a.m. my well, time. Well, I mean, I'm waking up at like 6, 9 my time. I'm, oh, I see. And then just trying to go back to sleep. I see. My bad. But yeah, no, I mean, it's been a hell of a fucking week. It sounds not that great when you say it actually out loud. We're like, we just drank <laughs> in we my just apartment. drank high noons in an apartment. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it sounds pretty boring, actually. Madden, and I watched you play in different ballparks <laughs> on the show. That's my I'm idea like, of a great... <laughs> I would just be sitting there smoking and going, play a night game. I want to watch. <laughs> play I want to watch because yeah. I don't like to play because there's too many buttons. I'm an old guy. Yeah, I never made it past Super Nintendos, but I like. But I like the the the, the presentation. The graphics are oh sure they're, they're so beautiful. pretty and I'm so new beautiful. TV. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to start streaming again uh, pretty soon. I'm going to do all that. Today's Josh Potter show is brought to us by DoorDash, and boy, oh boy, did DoorDash save my bacon this weekend because I had. No idea that I got the wrong cord to go from my computer to my television. Almost ruined our football Sunday. But as I was learning that I screwed up uh, right before kickoff, boom, put the cord into DoorDash, the kind of cord I needed. DoorDash came up with it. It was unbelievable. I didn't know they could get me those kinds of things, and I just learned that aspect of it. On top of the fact that they get you hooked up with all your favorite restaurants, whether they be a local favorite or if you're traveling and you want uh, something that you just know all about already, like a, a chain restaurant that you're already familiar with, boom, they got that as well. They'll help you out with every sort of uh, little inconvenience you might uh, encounter whether it be a toiletry you want you need or uh, groceries anything DoorDash I'm telling you they got it on there and right now if you go uh, for a limited time listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when they download the DoorDash app and enter the code Josh that's 25 25- percent off up to ten dollar value zero delivery fees on their first order when you download the doordash app in the app store and enter code josh don't forget that's code josh for 25 percent off your first order with doordash subject to change terms apply but let's go and uh let's get into the the sports i have sounds do you know i have sounds have you ever uh, heard my sounds i've heard your sounds you ever hear that no but it's great where are you like in a bathroom <laughs> i put a little echo on it you know yeah, okay. give a little depth i thought you were just it. like you you were in like a public restroom and you waited for everyone to leave and you're like lock the door <laughs> time to do my baby beep beeps <laughs> <laughs> i wish there was a great story like that behind it but Probably just did it in my bedroom, and I did put echo on it. I, that was just my little. It's called a reverb, actually. I'm learning. Yeah, you know, but that does uh, signify the sports have begun, and uh, I know we watched every snap of football yesterday, which was the best, the best week one you could possibly imagine. Watching red zone from dawn till dusk when your team has already won. Exactly. So the Bills had already won on Thursday, so you can just go, oh, that's none of this really. It really was the matters, perfect but. storm of hanging out because it was like we could go to the game. We watched the Bills the whole time. We watched Ozzy Osbourne and uh, come out and do two songs, which was sad and kind of weird. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, we won. We won. We blew them out. And we, we got drunk. Out. It was a beautiful night. Hot as fucking balls. But, yeah, and then Sunday you can just get up. You turn on the old red zone, blam, you're just blasting through it. I love red zone. When it's, when the Bills aren't on, I love red next zone. Next Sunday's going to be the same because we're playing Monday night. Oh, yeah. I got to get home from fucking La Jolla early. That means that's all that that means. I love red zone so much. But, yeah, so during it, we watched every snap. We watched the, 
the Cardinals play against the Chiefs. And Cliff Klingsbury, for those who don't know, he's the dorkiest coach you've ever seen in your life. I don't know what 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 well, would you say about him that you well uh, he's got that he's got that John Wick house yeah he's everyone got... <laughs> like in the draft when he had like you know like I don't know like one of those fireplaces where just like single flames are coming up with rocks <laughs> and he's yeah. got like the glass wall and the waterfall and he's see if you could Google just, Cliff Klingsbury's house looks like a place where like spies would get together to like talk about or or just like the places where like fucking uh you know like. In a cartel movie, it's like, we're going to see the big boss. Look at this thing. It's like that fake grass. It's in Arizona, obviously. So there's, you know, if you're if you're an environmentalist, this house is, just look away, trigger warning, because there's going to be some phony grass that's watered. It doesn't even look like a house. It looks like some kind of memorial. <laughs> it's like a memorial or like an art museum. Yeah, like where do you even where sleep? Where is Cliff living? Where do I get to this? watch my television? It's got these 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 grass squares. And do you just always wear clothes? Because, like, you can see through that house. Yeah, like, where are the walls? <laughs> yeah, it's so just glass. But so Cliff Klingsbury just looks like he's a, I don't know, just a button-up dork. I don't know. He looks like a guy that doesn't fuck in that house. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, he doesn't do anything fun in that house. He has that house. He's always walking around cleaning up smudges and shit. You know, he's like... Big Swiffer, this guy. Yeah, he loves the Swiffer. And uh, but he's come out to say that uh, Kyler Murray basically needs to practice more. And the whole he said the whole team, but he was talking about Kyler Murray needs to practice after better. yesterday. After yesterday, and they had that thing in that in his contract where it was like you've got to watch film. Yeah, you. And gotta, then they took it out. Well, because it got exposed, which was so dumb. But really, did you hear the problem with Kyler Murray is that um, he has like a Fortnite addiction? Oh. Or Call of Duty, a Call NFL of Duty, players. one they of the love, Call of Duties. They love playing games. They like throw them away, destroy them, and then like they're driving to Best Buy the next day to get another one. Really? How do you know they destroy them? There was they... a guy on. I don't know what he was on. I, I'd say a guy, not very a credible. football player. A football player. I swear <laughs> to God, on like a Jim Rome show talking about how many like Maddens he'd gone through. I guess now you download them anyways. But yeah, when you had a physical copy, he would like smash it. And go no more. He, and he wouldn't send any of his people. Because he was addicted to it. Yes, he wouldn't send anybody to go get another one. But then he'd be like driving around in his car and be like, oh, GameStop. And then get another one, go home. <laughs> well, evidently the Cardinals organization is so sketched out about Kyler Murray and his gaming that like they had to put in a, in his contract that he had to practice or watch film like a certain amount of hours every week. And then it was exposed and they said, they, oh, we took that out of the contract. But he had to meet those like incentives to hit his bonus or whatever the case may be. But um, yeah, I just thought it was str- and then now he's calling him out. So I think Cliff Klingsbury hates video games. That's why he lives in such a mausoleum. <laughs> he really is like a boring soul. Yeah, I don't know. What, even when you see him on the sideline, I'm like, I mean, many coaches kind of have just a, a terrible resting coaching face. But him especially, I'm like, what brings this man joy? Yeah, I don't even. I mean, I think if you Google who his girlfriend is. I'd like to see that because well, I think sure he has a smoke show girlfriend, but it's like sure. a robot. It's like a, one of those robot things where it's like for appearances. I'm not saying he's gay. I'm saying he's like an anamorph. He like doesn't have sex with anything. Or his wife isn't real. She's just She's a just like a, a robot. Yeah, like she's a human hologram though. Look at her. Good golly. Oh. I mean, I like seeing the variety of the pictures, actually. Go back to the, uh, oh, my Lord. Okay, well, now I'm intrigued. <laughs> but, yeah, so, I mean, he's, you know, I don't think he's having any fun with this lady, but I, I could be no wrong. No fun in the desert. I could be wrong <laughs> at the end of the day. Uh, but Russell Wilson also, he's playing in Monday Night Football as we're about to tape this. Uh, so you'll know the results out there if you're watching this day came out. Okay, I'm glad that you're still on her pictures. That's good. Yeah, that looks that nice. That one was nice. Thank you for that. What's her name for the record? We should Veronica Bielik. Oh my god! Why do all these coaches date Veronicas? Bielik. Yeah, but um, what's his name? Uh, McVeigh. His lady is also a Veronica Cronin. He doesn't even talk to his wife though. He's like, I'm just gonna play with the dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that's that what guy. I'm saying. That's what these coaches We're all have these smoke guys. show wives, <laughs> and they're just are for like arm candy at the uh, dinners and shit. Because like, I just don't think they even. They're like, I'm staying at the facility, babe. Yeah, they don't have time. They work like 90 hour work weeks. So they're they gotta be getting 
their satisfaction elsewhere. And, and that season I, never really ends. There's I, no off season. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're always at, at the office. They're always watching film. If they're at home, they're like, you know, on their iPad watching. I got to watch, uh, you know, Stafford snaps here, honey. And then he like is, you know, watching every fucking snap. Yeah, they're of the all game. they're all like paterno, you know, Nebraska. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're all one <laughs> focus, one that's thing it. on their mind. And that's why I want to offer my services to NFL teams out there. If you want to make me a position in the front office where I pleasure the coaches' wives, they're not going to get attached to me, but like you know, they can use me as one of those. Uh, clit stimulators you know like one of those like zzz, <laughs> I, just make me the human form of that and i can i you know i'll also do errands for them whatever you want so Listen. any any nfl organization out there even if it's for some elderly man who's sick of his wife you know like a fucking belichick or whatever i know he's got 300 ladies now she just opens the door and you're there like i'm here to pleasure you <laughs> <laughs> I'm your pleasure. I'm the pleasure. You? Uh, <laughs> yeah, the pleasure executive. I brought executive. that in. <laughs> These edibles are supposed to be sixty milligrams, dude. Come on, take a whole ring, <laughs> take a belt. <laughs> Who are the hottest? So we got her. We got Veronica Cronin is uh, McVeigh's. Well, I feel like these days all of the wives are probably going to be pretty good looking. Yeah. You know, we live in a day, and plus, like, that's most okay. Coaches so, what are, do you like, think the ugliest one is? I don't, you know. You don't want to say? No, I mean, I don't, it's, I don't know that. Don't, ugly's a wrong word. It's a terrible word. I don't think use. it exists. Okay, I can, I can go with that. Does there a li see if you can find a list of. If that's a list that exists, that's a pretty it's, wild list. I've got a hell of a. I'd compiled. like to make one. That's what I'm trying to come, come out of this with. God, I cannot talk today. Oh, here we go. These are the wags, though. These are the wives of the players mm. they don't have the coaches wives on any of them and that the thing is the coaches wives are getting younger because well, coaches are getting younger exactly so seek out uh let's see let's type in the let's like type the, in matt lafleur and his wife if he has one does he have a, all these coaches probably have wives yeah or girlfriends mike mcdaniel does he have a fucking girlfriend you think i hope he has probably like a he's show. like a year older than me i know it's crazy <laughs> When we were kids, coaches were gross, disgusting men. Now they're all like square jawed, like great facial hair. <laughs> they wear like flat brim hats. Like Kyle Shanahan looks great. Yeah. Uh, the 49ers. Mike coach. McDaniel. Yeah. Mike McDaniel looks, looks like great. a younger version of me if I worked out. Yeah. Now, I mean, like the last like gross coach left is like Andy Reid. He's just like a walrus. <laughs> What's Andy Reid's wife look like? R E I D. She probably just looks exactly like Andy Reid. Oh my God! No, that's Andy Reid's wife. He's fucking Andy Reid is killing it. He's got a Hawaiian shirt on. He smokes a cigar. He's fucking coaching the Chiefs. Good for Andy Reid. Yeah, see, that's pretty great. Yeah, she's, you're right. She's a babe. They're that all would babes. have been the one. Who who is another slob? Belichick. Yeah, but he's got like he's divorced and he now fucks just like is that right? Hose on his boat. I'm pretty hose sure. on his boat. Like when yeah, when he wants to. <laughs> Belichick, that's how he, that's divorced. what he says to his when there's the bye week. He's like, I'm "You guys gonna... know <clears throat> I'm gonna have uh, hose on the boat, so I'm gonna have my uh, phone turned off, so don't uh, don't don't text." I'd love if he fucking got that way, where he's just, <laughs> just like talking like a fucking savage. If you think I'm off the grid this weekend, it's because, uh, well, boats and hose. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> Is this just some of the ladies he's been with here? Oh my god, his wife's a fucking babe too. His ex-wife. Well, what are we looking at here? Who's this? He up. I, uh, I do remember like, when I he was traded my wife. He was <laughs> he was like trying to get into Instagram like two years ago. <laughs> yeah, I and bet. He, would, he would post all these stories and he'd be like, "I'm," uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then there'd be no ending to it. Just rip. <laughs> 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 he doesn't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, Belichick. Well, he's a he's a powerful man. What do you think his bedroom talk is like, though? He's like, uh, "Why don't you come over here and suck on this dick?" <laughs> I don't. I mean, I'm gonna need you to. Put does your... he does he make her wear a headset? <laughs> he's talking to her through the thing. X forty two. He's like, I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, Let's gonna, study. The I'm film. gonna need you to eat my ass. I think I answered that already. <laughs> God, she's hot. I'm so distracted by all these. But like I said, NFL, 
or any NFL organization out there that needs my services, please reach out Josh Potter show at gmail.com. I, uh, I do have Russell Wilson though. He is, I brought him up a moment ago before we got sidetracked by all the butts and boobies and things like that. But, uh, Russell Wilson is playing in Monday night football tonight and he did something really weird, uh, as he always does. I just don't understand why he is the way that he is. He's practicing high fives. Oh, yeah. When he comes out of the tunnel, he does like a like with his hands down. Yeah. Look at this. He's doing the whole thing as if there were people like uh, in the wings as he comes out of the tunnel. He's running out and he does like the fake high fives. Like this, is, like where, high this is where I'd high five people. I He's do, high fiving the fans. He goes, I do my cross. The real fans. I do the like the thing to Jesus where I, I tap and I kiss and then I'm going to run out and I'm going to high five just these people. And then that's when I. And at that point of the tunnel, those wouldn't be fans. Those would be like staff people. That's probably who he's like. And then I, I high five Larry, yeah. our travel organizer. <laughs> he comes out and one I, day and Larry's not there. He's like, "Where's Larry?" Oh yeah, uh, I, I couldn't even high five. He's, he just high fives nobody when Larry's missing. It's bizarre. It is bizarre. He's a boring a hole anyway. Do you think he's boring? We've talked on this show quite a bit. You can take this off. It's distracting to me or at least pause it because I can't watch him do this. I, I will sit here and stare at it all day long. Um, but uh, I, I don't know that he's boring. I think he's just like he's not what he wants. to. He wants to be like this dashing Joe Namath type of like charismatic guy. And he wants to be like on all the commercials and the but funny he's a guy. Dork. Even a- when you exactly. See him, he's a dork. He was at the U- <laughs> when they kept showing him at the U.S. Open like during Serena's match. You know, a lot of times you see a celebrity, you talk about he wants to be a dashing guy. You see all – he's just dressed like a middle schooler. <laughs> you know, he's got like his sunglasses on. Like He's got like the watch he got for graduating and like the polo he got at Structure. <laughs> yeah, Russ is on the spectrum, I think, to the point where I think Sierra is should be like investigated for being in a relationship with him, being an able-minded woman. Yeah, he's just <laughs> – there it is. Yeah, look, he's just – that's not cool. Just a, a – nothing like, wow. Like, you got to have, like, a cool suit on or, like, a hat. Or like Yeah, you know, I mean – Or I, go for it, big air. Go like Cam, you know, just dress like Kung Lao from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> I just think he uh, – I think he's one of those guys, though, and I maybe this is my own uh, sort of set of eyes, but – He's one of those guys that's handsome enough, at least, that he can wear whatever he wants. Well, that's true. I mean, he's he's, he's a handsome guy. So it's like, he, and he's just got sunglasses on. Like his, his, does he tell the lady like we're not taking these off? That's Sierra. I mean, she's that's she's a singer. She's that I've never heard of. Yeah, just as famous as him, maybe if not more. But um, I yeah, I mean, she, I can't believe you never heard of her. I've you, I've I know of her. I mean, I'm not saying I just sure. learned of Sierra today, but like I just don't know what her her whole thing is give me a seer i'll know the words when you tell me a name of a song from her okay um, rob's uh, i thought rob would have one off the dome no nope. no I, i'm not i'm not super familiar i'm you're, just pulling rob, her up rob you're not a fan of sierra i'm not you of all people i just I heard she has like two singles that i would be able to be like oh that that's you would hear it too and you'd be able, you'd know exactly. so this isn't the the lady that golden tate it is oh it is they they work through oh it. no 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 I'm sorry. This is Future's ex-wife. Okay. So she has children with Future, I do believe, uh, if not another rapper. <laughs> but she has children with a rapper from before. But Russell Wilson's ex-wife was rumored to be fucking Golden Tate after all yeah. that went down. Because he had a wife that he was, like, married to in college. And then he got, like, you know, now he's drafted in the third round. Now he's starting for the Seahawks. Ooh, he won the Super Bowl. Now he's like, I just got rich. Peace out, loser wife from my first go around. I'm going to get Sierra now. That's the one he wanted? Yeah. Uh, Her biggest hits were Goodies featuring uh, Petey Pablo, One Two Step featuring Missy Elliott. Let me see you one two step. There you go. Sure, that sounds like... You don't remember that from going to... I mean, there was a period in my life where I went to bars where they would play loud pop music mm. <laughs> instead of dive bars like we spent eight hours in the other yeah. day. I mean, where they played, I don't even know what they were. They well, we had... walked in, they were playing like Black Flag. It was great. <laughs> they were playing like great old punk rock and now. Yeah. They didn't play Sierra 
unfortunately. But yeah, one two step. If you heard it, you'd know it. And it's a banger. And she uh, she was a huge two thousands superstar. And Russell Wilson got to like live a dream and get to impregnate Sierra. I'm happy for Russell. At the end of the day, we should all just be happy for him because be he is. He will Spend snap someday and go through it, like, and it'll be really strange. It'll be. I would just like for him to be interesting. <laughs> well, good luck ever finding that. He's it, boring in the way that, like, Derek, like Derek Jeter was a great baseball player, one of the best, but so boring. But Jeter was fucking everybody. But that doesn't make him. Exciting. That makes him exciting to me. I guess so. I guess. <laughs> well, I guess he, he. I will say this: Jeter kept up more of a mystique. Yeah, where it was like this dash, and he was a dashing guy. He wore like he looked more of the part, like a like a Bruce Wayne or like a like a 007. Right. Okay. Russ thinks he. I think Russ wants to look like hip hop or like a top tier guy in the in the black community, where like everyone in the black community thinks he's a dork because he is a dork. Yeah. But people in the white community <clears throat> think he's a fucking dork too. So I feel like all this is going to spiral out of control. Just once point. in a while, just drop a soundbite where you're not talking about your teammates. Oh, his favorite soundbite is Broncos <clears throat> Country, Let's Ride. That's his new one, yeah. Broncos Country, Let's Ride. Broncos Country, Let's Ride. I just want to be out there with my teammates. Just love my teammates. <laughs> Today's Josh Potter show is brought to us by BetterHelp. Sometimes, you know, you can fixate on a problem for so long that uh, you don't take the time to find a solution. You're just dwelling on the problem. It can be tough to train your brain to stay in problem solving mode when those types of things happen. But when you start to learn how to find your own solutions, there's no better feeling. And BetterHelp is going to hook you up with those tools because they have a therapist that can become a, a better problem solver for you, really, making it easier to accomplish your goals no matter how big or small. And uh, I got to tell you, I mean, doing this type of therapy, too, on the road and things like that, it's always uh, more it's easier to, than going to a doctor's office you know it's right there you can do a video call with your therapist you can do an audio call if you have to uh you can even text them it's unbelievable how accessible that they are and how easy it is to go with a busy lifestyle if you need uh sort of a, a therapy session that you wouldn't be able to get if you're traveling for work or if you're got kids or something like that. So go check out BetterHelp Online Therapy. They offer video, phone, and chat therapy sessions, as I mentioned. And when you want to be a better problem solver, uh, therapy can get you there. So visit BetterHelp.com slash Josh Potter today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash Josh Potter. Well, another uh, news, I don't know if I put this into the dossier. I don't think I did, but. Uh, one of the Watts tore their pecs again, and the Watts just love tearing their pecs. There must be something in them Subway sandwiches. The Watts love tearing their pecs. TJ Watt just tore his pec, and I know that JJ Watts torn a pec or two in his day. So I actually tweeted, I said, what's up with the Watts and their pecs? Is this genetics? Is this something that uh, is just a coincidence? And people replied that TJ Watt is on steroids. Everyone in Pittsburgh fans, oh. and I didn't know this was a thing, but uh, so like I had so dozens steroids of may equal an pec tearing. A, a pec tear. Yeah, evidently. I don't know how that would work, <clears throat> but they're like it's because he's on the gear, uh, he's on steroids, he's juicing. Uh, so many pe people who are Steelers fans uh, sending this to me. So I never knew that. We'll have to keep our eyes peeled. He will be out for several weeks, but, uh, also the, I mean, I don't know if this is on the docket, but did you see the, the Dak Prescott timeline? He's going to miss eight weeks. I mean, Dak Prescott, for those who don't know, quarterback <laughs> of the Cowboys, we, we were so excited for Sunday night football yesterday. You have to understand the pageantry behind it all. <clears throat> Wake up at 10 a.m. Kick Which off. I'm an East Coast boy. This is a fun. I've never gone on this ride before. Yes, it's a fun one when just we have a friend. And when you know the plan is to is just on. drink and eat pizza and watch football all day long. And it was the first week of the season, so 10 a.m. We were up. I had a little cord dilemma, but we fixed it. That's what a world we live in too. You're like, what am I gonna do about this cord? I'm like, just order one on like DoorDash or whatever. They'll and I use DoorDash bring exactly. You a damn cord. And a cord came. We missed. I mean, we had to watch like the first eight minutes on my laptop. So what? But we got it up onto the big TV and oh boy, we're off and running 10 a.m. And then so you go through the first slate of games. 10 a.m. ends around one. One o'clock, a new group of games start. And we're watching every snap of these things. Every game. Little channel called Red Zone. Best channel in the world. And so by the time the 8 o'clock game, which in L.A. is at 5 o'clock, comes on, we're at a peak. We can't wait. The grand finale is here. It's the last game of the night. And Dak Prescott and the Cowboys stunk so bad, it Terrible. almost ruined my day. Honestly. 
it was like so boring of a game. I'm so sick of them as a franchise. Every goddamn year, the oh. Cowboys and Dak. Remember when Dak didn't have the money? Got to pay Dak. Got to pay. Well, why? Yeah. What, what has he done? And he is the king of, at the end of his throws, smashing his hand on stuff. <laughs> yeah. Whether he it's loves a it. helmet, a garage mm. door, another guy's hand. He's just smashing his hand. He should not even be allowed to throw football anymore. I don't understand how a man, maybe he has depth perception like me, but it's like, stop, you throw, let go of the ball. I get it, you have to follow through, but like, stop bashing your hand on shit. That's what I would, if I was a coach, I'd yeah. say, hey man, just quit bashing your hands on people's faces. Like, Here's a list of quarterbacks who've never smashed their hand on anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to study at the end of their throw how their hand doesn't just catapult into a man's head. Yeah, <laughs> it's not just smashing off of getting it tangled in a face mask and like ripping your fingers out. And it happened last night. It hit, it hit like another guy's hand and you and I were like, oh, okay. And the next thing you know, he's on the sideline going, and some some doctor, <laughs> I put in quotes, yeah. just some guy in a cowboy hat going, just pushing on his palm like, what about that? The team doctor what about for that? the Cowboys <laughs> looks like, yeah. a, like it's like, you, I didn't know you to hire an actual cowboy doctor. He's like the owner of the football team from The Simpsons. He's like, <laughs> well, hello, what's going on? Yeah, and he's there, <laughs> there with his, he's got like uh, these glasses that snap in the middle here so you can take them down and put them like a lot around his Around neck. his bolo So you can tie. have like also a monocle. <laughs> And he's like looking at Dak's hand, like, well, well we got yeah, a hand. Just, it looks like a hand to me. Yeah, it's just a close up of an old fingernail going into like <laughs> the meat of his Dak's palm. And then him just going, well, oh, seven to eight weeks. <laughs> yeah. And then in an unprecedented move, usually when an, in, an injury happens to a player, you have speculation for a little while. The coaches go up to the podium and say, oh, we're going to consult with our doctor and see what the uh, step is. And then you get it on a Monday uh, on the injury report. The owner slash GM slash president of the Cowboys, Jerry Jones, decided to walk out to the press and it didn't even look like he had an official press conference. People just saw him walk out into a hallway and ran around him with yeah, microphones just, and he's like, just hammered. Dak's going to be out for <laughs> eight weeks. He's already diagnosed him and everything. He's like, that was, yeah, that was wild. Yeah, yeah. There was like instantly a, a report that was like, I'm sorry, Jerry, did you just say surgery? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've had about a dozen Tom Collins tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I want me some glory hole. No, he and so I mean, I've never heard a coach or anybody come out and just say that just before drop they even surgery. Like, 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 like at the end of the game. Like the game hasn't even like I don't even think Dak had taken his shoulder pads off yet before that he was like, He's gonna need surgery. It's like he diagnosed him himself at the end of the day. It's fucking wild. But yeah, that football Sunday was unbelievable. I'll never forget the kickoff to the 2022 season as long as I live. What with the Bills game and all of the fucking red zone. And I'm going to have to get home early on Sunday to watch the rest of it. Oh, I had another uh, sports thing, not in football, but in uh, baseball. Aroldis Chapman, a couple of weeks ago, he got put on IL and... uh, Everyone's like, oh, fuck the Yankees. You know, they just keep getting worse. What's it? What's IL? That's the injured list. They call oh, it. Okay, it's like a, IR. Oh, okay, baseball. it's IR. Sorry, I'm not familiar with so much baseball. No, that's okay. But um, they put him on the, the injured list. So everyone's like, oh, what's going on? Why? Because he, he just pitched or whatever. And it was because his leg got infected from getting a tattoo on it. Oh. So now he's fucked. And it might affect his entire career. Did we have. Why are you getting a tattoo if you're. Like during a, the season. During the season. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Well, here's the thing. Aroldis Chapman is a scumbag also. He did uh, get some domestic violence charges in the past. I believe he slapped his wife or girlfriend with a gun. Uh, he, he pistol whipped her. He pistol whipped her, right. Yeesh. Exactly. That's not nice. And so he... Uh, oh, he's uh, eager to return after the uh, tattoo infection. Well, I don't know if he's going to get to at this point because he was their closer. He was like the guy that was the Edwin Diaz of the Yankees for many seasons. And then every year that they got eliminated from the playoffs, it was because someone made a giant walk-off bomb on a roll this Chapman. So he got relegated to like being a six inning reliever or whatever. So I feel like he's just kind of like given up, you know, and he, he doesn't seem like he has that, that dog in him. Gotta have that dog in him. <laughs> that, that's the most boring thing in all of sports right now yeah well how do you like playing with uh josh allen oh he's he, got a dog in him he's got that dog in him what does that mean 
Yeah. <laughs> Do we got to give him the Heimlich? Get it out. <laughs> it's got dog blood. He's Yeah, he's been fucking dogs. <laughs> he's come from a long line of dog His fuckers. mother fucked a dog, yeah. and her mother fucked a dog. This he's guy got dogs. is part Doberman, okay? <laughs> you want part Doberman at QB1. <laughs> it's got that dog in him. But uh, what are you pulling up here now? He's got that dog in him. Oh, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> okay. Is this like a super cut of everyone? <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's on the NFL Network official Twitter. It's got oh, that dog yeah, no, in they, him. They, they, they love it. They have like a segment now. It's like, who got that dog in him this time? <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, talk about who got that dog in him this, this go around. Today's Josh Potter show is also brought to us by DraftKings. Oh, my Lord, was it an action-packed NFL Week 1. That Bengals-Steelers game going into overtime, watching the kicks get missed over and over again. If you had the money line on one of those games, you were sweating with me, my friend. I know my pick last week didn't necessarily come to fruition all the way because I said I took the Bills and I took the over. The over did not hit, of course, coming a bit shy. But hey, you know what that means. We're just getting ready for week two, baby. Week two right around the corner, and uh, we're just getting started, baby. You can get ready for week two of touchdowns, big plays, and even bigger wins with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. This week, new customers can bet just $5 on any football game, and they're going to get $200 in free bets instantly. Want more action? Everyone can experience the thrill of DraftKings early win promotion. It's simple. This Sunday, bet on any NFL team to win. If your team leads by 10 at any point during the game, you're going to get paid instantly, even if your team loses. So go check that out as well over at DraftKings. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use promo code Josh Potter to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That's code Josh Potter only at DraftKings Sportsbook an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for all the details below. But let's let's get to the news now. The queen is dead. That's all we got to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sick of hearing about it. Are you? Well, I don't give a shit about the Queen. I don't. I think most people don't care. I don't even think British people care. Like you said, they were just like happy to get off work. But like when they're like her reign, her reign. Yeah, it was a long one. What reign? Did she go outside? I mean, <laughs> she did back in the day in <laughs> okay. the fucking thirties or whatever. But she also, I feel like she's getting a lot of residual flack upon dying like she kind of laid low like you said she hasn't been doing much the last you know a couple since covid many people conspiracy people out there speculating that she died during covid and they didn't want to report it as it being covid that got the queen then they're like we're gonna bury nfl week one with the news <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's i don't know how much it even like it I think NFL buried the queen. They were like, we're, we should do it during NFL week one. We should announce it so less people really like sniff around this. <laughs> I you remember because I, I watched Good Morning Football on Friday morning because I wanted to see. Were the they queening it up? They were queening it up. They're like, uh, we know all of our all of our viewers crossed the globe are mourning. <laughs> we're not mourning. We do not give in England, maybe, but not. in England, may I, I'm not trying to be. What are these insensitive? Uh, a woman is dead. Yeah, but what can you do? No, I mean, that's the thing. She's like a 96-year-old woman died. A lot of them probably died yeah. that same day. But also, like, it's weird to say the globe, like, the crown represents, like, imperialism and, like, there are probably countries that fucking would spit on the queen if they rolled her body <laughs> of course. through there. You know sure. what I'm saying? Yeah. So to say that, to say around the globe is a little... I don't know, grandiose. But uh, like you said, an old lady died, and she, she did do some great things, I'd imagine. But she also, you know, people want to remind her that she raised a pedophile, and Andrew, uh, probably in, I mean, a queen having a pedophile son is like a tale as old as time. I mean, yeah, I think it's the most cliche shit I've ever heard in my life, if you mm -hmm. ask me. But people seem to be outraged about it. I don't think there should be any outrage. Well, listen to this guy here on this, this uh, little video. <laughs> God save the king, they're trying to drown him out with God save the king's uh, heckler. Whoa, 
Now the police are really. Give him a lumping. <laughs> Disgusting! He's proper cunted. So it's like, do these people disagree with that guy? But at the same time, it's like, come on, man. It's the fucking Queen's funeral, you dumb asshole. Yeah, it's not a good time to bring it up. And Andrew's just walking there. I like that he did it to Andrew. That's cool. But it's like, you can probably find another avenue to do that. But the funeral probably hasn't happened yet, right? Is it the funeral? It's like the procession. That's going to be like a big I thought this was the funeral, yeah? Well, because, I mean... I mean, we've been in They've had her in the freezer for like six months. We've been in our own... (laughs) Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're like, we can do the funeral whenever we want. I mean... This is the funeral. Yeah, yeah. yeah, They had the... We've been in a vacuum the last She died in Scotland, and then they had to... Bring her. bring her, but that's just her like her body being moved. okay. All right, and all right. so like the kids are walking behind it. Remember, I remember, I vividly remember like watching Princess Diana's funeral. It was on every channel, though. Like you said, it was. It this was. one wasn't. It's not like they're taking Good Morning Football off television to put on the Queen's funeral. Unfortunately, it was probably on some news things. It was probably on some fucking the BBC, obviously, but it wasn't like gonna be interrupting people at work are just like live streaming it crying there's people probably <laughs> like that are watching fucking prices right and are like god damn it the queen <laughs> yeah <laughs> fucking shit even young and the restless right there in like, showcase showdown this is bullshit this is some fucking bullshit but yeah i didn't even know she had her funeral already i mean i would assume like you said that it would have been a an event and we would have seen that like, they built up to yeah the queen's it's... funeral live wednesday <laughs> Don't miss it. <laughs> yeah. Because in two months, we're going to have the king's funeral. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this guy doesn't look much better. No, he's old as fuck. He, he's he's probably, confused. He's, he's like, finally me? Like, he's king? Like, no, he's finally stoked. He's like, ah, yes. Mommy's dead. I get to be the king. God, I've waited so long. And now he's like finally going to be the king and he's going to die. How old is he? Charles, 70? Chucky boy. He's got to be 70. I mean, she was 96. I'm gonna say, they I'm gonna had say, him young back then. I'm going to say I'm gonna say 72. I'm going to say 75. 75. Right? 75 for Charles. I mean, in, I, I, can you uh, believe like Camilla Parker Bowles is like kind of the queen now? How cool is that for her? That horse-faced loon? 73. 73 right between So there. he's a young man. I guess. In, <laughs> I mean, for them, in scale of royals, in terms of like, they're all embalmed and some, they just have money packing their innards, basically. I mean, they are going to get every health benefit that they can possibly afford. I mean, look at the her, his father. Uh, what was his fucking name? Prince Andrew or whatever? No, George. That was the, whatever his fucking father was. So just George. In his there. father just died. He was like Prince 50, Philip. Prince Philip, Philip. yeah, he was like uh, 50 when they fought World War II and shit. I mean, he was fucking old forever, and he looked like he was already dead when he was like in his last days. They have that picture of him like in a car where he's like, (laughs) he looks like a ghost (laughs) flew by him. Well, that's how the, yeah, that's how the, you know, Queen is too. Yeah, she was, but she was still kind of like had a little pep in her step. Yeah, she had a little smile and wave. Yeah. Prince Philip, though, look at that, that, do Prince Philip before he died and pull up that fucking image. I want there it is right there that top one where he's in the hey oh lord I am Prince Philip oh d- darling oh. I think I'm going to pass away and then they're like nope we got to keep him going so they just come in <laughs> nope. they, wheel, they they put tens of thousands of dollars of stuff into his body to keep him alive you know that's what we're doing with Biden you know we're gonna keep we're keeping him alive we're gonna be able to keep him going for another they think he's not gonna be able to do a second term he'll be able to look at we kept these fucking <laughs> the Brits kept these people alive for is he long? really running for a second term oh yeah Get I mean ready. I guess I've heard he's that, but gonna I just, do that. I, even though I've heard it I'm like no well it's because your your brain can't fathom it's like when your grandpa's like in 10 years I'm going to finish the kitchen and you're like okay dude <laughs> <You> <laughs> <Yeah. know? laughs> big kitchen in the sky <laughs> yeah, yeah good luck pops but uh, yeah the queen's dead and uh it's uh, it's I think it's a shame. I don't you know, I, I think it's the end of a legacy. Would have been nice to have her make a hundred. That would have been cool. Would have been cool. Uh, she was what, ninety six, right? So only four more years she would have been to making a hundred. It's almost like the Pope dying though, or like uh like when John Paul the Second died, it was like this Pope has been Pope for a fucking minute. You know what I mean? Is, and, is that when the Pope dies? That's like when like the smoke comes out of the. Well, the smoke comes out when they they choose out a, a new, new one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And then, I mean, now we've had Ratzenberger or whatever that guy, the 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 Nazi child that became the Pope. <laughs> he quit, and then we got Pope Francis. So it's, you know, the turnover has been great since. And I think that's going to happen with this king shit. Like we'll have King William by like twenty thirty. Like you and said. that's the guy that looks like John Elway. Yeah. Okay. Cool. King Elway. I'm king all about. King I'm all Elway. about King Elway, man. <laughs> he went bald. I felt like I really relate with Prince William because he was like, remember, he was like on the cover of like heartthrob magazines when he was like sixteen. So then he turned like twenty four and he went bald, and he just looked like George Costanza, and people were like, ugh. <laughs> Yeah, and people just were all kind. went like, "How about that redhead one? We'll go after him now, you know." And you can't wear like just like a ball cap. No, like, not like me. When I mean, you're in yeah. the royal family, yeah, yeah. Could you imagine? You can't that? just have like your straight prim bills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's up? <laughs> I'm uh, I'm Prince Josh. How you doing? This does not come off. Yeah, yeah. I I yeah. I don't know. Is it, give me my royal hat. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'd have to wear something else. You know, they probably wore hats. Remember back in the day when it was like Mad Men times that everyone would wear a hat? I want to come back to that. Yeah, you and you, you had to like take it off. For if certain, you like, if someone walked by, hello. Yeah, if you wa- were in an elevator with a, and a woman walked in, you have to take it off. But other than that, you had that fucking hat on. Remember they were even saying that about Kennedy? They're like, he didn't wear a hat. Can't trust that guy. He doesn't wear a hat. I might have protected his head a little bit. I, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not that much. Not that much. But it might have. You know, thrown off something. Hey, it depends on the hat. Yeah. Someone sent this in uh, to me as well. Uh, It's about Kris Jenner. And this is a big news story today. Kris Jenner, evidently Ray J is telling folks that she picked out the portions of the sex tape in which was leaked back way back when, when Ray J... And Kim Kardashian had a sex tape put out. Well, right? I mean, it's it's great when an artist has creative control. Well, Kris Jenner, the mother, is oh. the one who did it. But yeah, you're right. She did. She was. I mean, she is the director of their lives, essentially. So it is good so that she, she got the supercut on the porn tape. Exactly. And I think that's part of the, their deal at the end of the day. And Ray J thinks exposing this is going to change people's opinions of Kris Jenner. I think it's just going to fortify people's opinions of her and think she's actually even more genius than people give her credit for, you know? Wow. Ma- watched multiple scenes, multiple different sex tapes. Yeah. And she then selected which one would be the release. That's wild. I think it's uh, just like in this one, doggy's good for you. Now, Kim, why are you moaning like that in this one? God, this is useless because you're just, <laughs> God. I mean, act like you fucked before, Kim. Jesus. Yeah, look at this flattering angle. She's just ripping into her everywhere and is like, picking... <laughs> oh, could you, would it kill I you? I was to... in the moment. This is how you suck dick, Kim. This Would it kill you <laughs> to put a little effort into it? Jesus. I can't Take believe your he... hog out. I'll show you how I it's can't done. believe he's still hard. God, what a fucking idiot. And they made money off this tape. Obviously. Oh, yeah. This is the one that was r- f- officially like put out. That, like like, put... like a one night in Paris kind of thing. Exactly. Uh, we met a gentleman the other night at the comedy store, Kevin Blatt, who like produces these types of- uh, That's fun. Brokers these types of deals. <laughs> brokers these types of deals. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he like did, instead of like I think DVD copies his... of movie on the street, he's got a stack of like, who do you want to see? Fuck. <laughs> I mean, he does. Yeah, basically. Or he's like, I have a stack of you fucking. You want to put this out or do you want someone else to put it out? <laughs> we can do this the rich way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we can make some money. It's uh, on what uh, you did. Check them out on your mom's house if you haven't already. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, this is a. I want to see the director's cut of this. Do you know, like the director's commentary? Now that we know that she was behind it, I want her to like go. I want to know why I she took this it out. scene. Yes, exactly. And I want to see the the cutting room floor. What was on the cutting room floor, and why it was on the cutting room floor. All of that. Stuff. Just they're just the two of them just sharing a pizza naked in between. <laughs> <laughs> that's a special feature. Yeah, that's. I want the whole. Uh, we need to bring back bonus features. Do they do that on? downloads i don't think they do they don't like when you buy a movie on like prime or itunes you don't get any special anything yeah i'd love some I'm, i miss i used to watch director's commentaries yeah we films. all we all did yeah but they just did away with them probably directors being like i don't want to fucking <laughs> people don't want to go anywhere anymore or like i gotta go like <laughs> go somewhere and talk to you about a thing i did 12 years do ago it in your fucking house yeah i don't know it's it's, it's it sucks i miss it well, folks, I love you very much. Thank you for joining us again on the program. I mean, we had a real hell of a week. I wish you could have been there for it and saw it. And uh, 
and took in part in it, to be quite honest with you, because then you'd be right here with us at this moment. But uh, nevertheless, I appreciate you coming aboard. Thank you, Matt Wayne. Tell everyone where they can find you, and if there's anything you want to plug. I am at no Wayne in Hell on Twitter and Instagram. A little bit more active on Instagram. <laughs> uh, I'm in a, a little film called Solo Project on Amazon Prime, and uh, I don't know. Check me out. Check them out. Uh, yeah, you don't have any. I, I, Joe List said the funniest thing. He's like, Matt Wayne is the funniest guy. He doesn't have a special. He doesn't have an album. One day. One fine day. He doesn't have a podcast. I, I don't know what to tell you to go look for. <laughs> <laughs> you make him sound like Dana Carvey's uh, Jimmy Stewart. Oh, I just, yeah. Well, Matt Wayne doesn't have a podcast. He doesn't have a podcast at all. This guy doesn't have a special. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad at uh, being a businessman. Well, it's fine because you're my best buddy and I love you. Thank you so much for hanging out with I love me you, this man. week and coming to do the podcast of course. with me. Thanks for having me. Because boy, oh boy. It's like doing your homework at the end of the day. I'm like, can you help me with my homework? Can you come and do a podcast with me? But I love you, folks. Thank you for joining me. And if you want to see me live, I'll be out and about. I'll be with Annie Letterman this weekend at the La Jolla Comedy Store. September 29th, I'll be at the Ontario Improv. On September 30th, Yuma, Arizona with Chase O'Donnell at a place called The Cress. And October 6th, I'll be at the Oxnard Levity Live. That is the correct date for that. So go score tickets up on my Instagram at Josh underscore Potter, on Twitter at J underscore Potter. And we will see you next Tuesday on The Josh Potter Show. Thank <laughs> you.